As soon as Microsoft rolled out their AI-powered Bing chat, people like myself began speculating about exactly how that would integrate with their operating system of choice for mobile Android. What would they do to bring it over to the Android side of things? And the first thing that they did was quite obvious. They just rolled it out into their Bing app, which I'm going to have to go ahead and guess almost nobody actually uses. It's more or less a glorified web browser, which then led me to ask uh, to myself in my own mind, why not just have this be inside your web browser built in? I mean, that's what you're already doing with your Edge browser on your on the PC. As you can see here, there's a Bing button up in the top corner. You can click on that and do all the Bing chat things you'd like to do right there in this sidebar, including using the page you're on for context. Ask Bing to give you, you know, the context of a page, a summary of the page that you're on, or to do all kinds of cool things, again, just using the page you're on as the context. So this was a very, very cool thing to me, and I thought, well, it's quite obvious then that they should do the exact same thing on mobile, and it appears that that is exactly what is in store because Bing has now officially rolled out to the Edge browser in Android. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how you can get this too. So as you can see down here at the bottom, there is the Bing chat button. But if you don't see this just yet, there are two things you can do. One, you can just wait because it appears to be a server side thing. I actually have Edge uh, cloned on my phone. You can see their Edge and then Edge 2, Edge 2 got it first and the other edge took like a few hours and then it popped up on it too. So this appears to be like a server side thing, no actual update needed. So you can just wait and it will eventually pop up or you can go to your address bar and type in edge colon slash slash flags and hit enter and then search for Bing. Scroll down and you're looking for a new Bing always show on toolbar and you can just change that to enabled and when you're done, there you go there. You should have the little Bing button down there at the bottom. What does this Bing button do? Well, if you click on the Bing button, it's going to look very similar to what it does on your desktop web browser. It opens up Bing and you're able to do all of the same sorts of things. Now, there is one really, really big caveat that they absolutely have to get working. Let's go to an actual web page and I'll show you. So I've opened up a news article via Feedly and let's open up the Bing button again. And now what I'm going to ask it to do is to summarize this page. And the way this is supposed to work, at least on the desktop side, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, is that it's supposed to take this web page and give you a brief summary of it so that you don't have to read the whole thing yourself. It'll just kind of break it down for me. But instead, it's searching for the term summarize this page and giving me information on that. That is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to use the page as context which is not what it's doing. So if we go over to the desktop browser and I try doing the exact same thing, well, that was actually kind of strange, but it did get there in the end. The first time it did, it actually searched for what this article was about and got the information from someplace else. Then I clicked on the button that says retry for this page only, and then it did it correctly. It summarized this page. So still somewhere kinks to iron out on the desktop side, but eventually it did actually summarize the page and use the page as context Whereas on the mobile version, that's not an option at all. It just searched for summarize this page that it thought that's what I wanted to know about, not actually the action. So that absolutely has to come. You have to be able to use the page as context. Otherwise, it's just a shortcut to Bing, but it's not really like related to your web browser. It overlays on top of the site you're on, but ignores that website. That's a huge piece of the functionality that they need to get right on mobile, and it looks like they need to get right on desktop as well, because I've seen it do weird things like this in the past. They gotta figure that stuff out. But nonetheless, it's good to have in the web browser. It's going to be a useful quick shortcut there. Hopefully they continue to more tightly integrate it into the Edge mobile experience with things like the widget and so forth and so on. But there you go. You can test it out right now, either load it up and it might already be there. You can wait for it to pop up or do what I just showed you in the earlier part of this video and try that out. It works really well, as you can see, on Surface Duo. I don't believe it's rolled out on iOS, although I do imagine it will do that later. I think Edge is on iOS. I guess that would be the first step of that, is confirming that Edge is available on iOS. I think it is. If it's not, shoot me. I don't know much about Apple stuff. At any rate, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this every single day. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.